thank you everyone for joining. Um, like you already mentioned, we'll be talking about the technical writer's guide to contributing to open source project. So the documentation of an open source project serves as an avenue for users to understand, contribute, and also use that open source project. So these have also shown that a good documentation serves as a means of helping as it shows that, oh, this particular open source project is actually healthy and people are using it. Yet, few open source projects can claim to have a good documentation, right? Well, the ones who manage to have struggle to keep that documentation up to date. However, there are also a lot of technical writers as well who shy away from contributing to open source projects, mostly because they don't necessarily understand how to, or they just don't think it's beneficial for them to, or they're influenced with the stereotype that only software engineers can contribute to open source projects. This talk aims to give an introductory guide into how technical writers can contribute to open source, it would cover the state of open source documentation, um, how to actually get started, and also cover some of the benefits and best practices when contributing as a technical writer. Uh, my name is Edith Young Asiko. I work as a developer advocate for Hashnode and contribute to the Video Land Open Source Organization as a technical writer. It is really possible that um, everybody who's attending this session has an idea of what an open source project is. But I just want to highlight it because I feel most of the time, whenever we're talking about open source projects, we're always focusing on the source code side of things. But I love to see an open or describe an, an open source project as a project whose source code and documentation, not necessarily just the source code, but the source code and documentation are made available for use, modification and enhancement by anybody in the world. If you could look at my slides, you'd see that I really highlighted anyone which goes for that to say that, no, you don't have to be a software developer to contribute to open source. Technical writers can contribute. Um, program managers can contribute. Designers can contribute to open source. So pretty much anybody who is interested can contribute to open source. So an open source project. In 2017, GitHub carried out a survey to understand some of the issues that people were facing in open source projects, right? So reaching out to like maintainers, designers, technical writers, to understand some of those issues and try to work on them. And as you can see, some of the issues raised were incomplete and confusing documentation, unresponsiveness, dismissive responses, conflict, unexpected rejection, and unwelcoming content, unwelcoming language or content. So just to break down, down a bit, this survey was um, was about like 5,500 people responded to the survey, right? And out of these 5,500 people, 90% of them complained that the documentation was incomplete or confusing. So this, the fact that 90% out of 5,500 people said the same thing about open source documentation goes to say that this is actually a problem. Everybody's complaining about not either um, finding confusing documentations or not even seeing an existing documentation at all, right? So this, this goes for that to say that the documentation of, a, of an open source project is arguably as necessary as the software. Therefore, technical writers are also as important as software engineers because nobody will use what they don't understand. So I'll give you an example. Let's say you build a really interesting open source project, a really interesting project and make it open source without writing, writing any form of documentation or readme, like nothing whatsoever, and put it on my GitHub. If someone eventually bumps into that project, they would not have any idea, like they wouldn't know what to do, right? So it pretty much means that everything that I've worked on just goes to waste, right? So people need to understand what you build you, what you want them to do in order to be able to do it effectively. So that is why um, technical writers are important in an open source, in an open source ecosystem. Because when technical writers come on board to contribute to open source, become more active in the open source ecosystem, they would know how to actually contribute effectively and also like you contribute. So now that you understand the state of open source and then you've also seen why technical writers are important because if technical writers don't exist or don't contribute to open source, it's either one of two things. The open source project would literally not have any documentation or if they try to work on the documentation, it becomes confusing because they don't necessarily have the skills to documents things in a way somebody would understand. So let's talk about how you can actually come to an open source project as a technical writer. So the first thing you need to do is find a project. 
a lot of people would ask, okay, hey, how do I find a project as a technical writer? I feel like you only find projects where you can contribute via like maybe coding or maybe designing. I feel like even find for design is a bit hard, but you definitely find more coding, coding questions, right? So what I would say is it could be one of two ways and I'll explain both. The first one would be to think about things that you're interested in. Are you interested in PyTorch, for instance? Then you could just go to GitHub and search for the word PyTorch. And once you search for that, you see tons of um, projects that are either using PyTorch or PyTorch itself. And you can go to that project and contribute to the project. So this, because the reason why that is important is because technical writers are supposed to understand what they're writing about, right? Because if you want to explain something to someone, you need to understand it very well in order to be able to explain it. That's like the first route. Then the next route would be not necessarily restricting yourself to the things you already know, but things you want to explore. Because another important skill of a technical writer is to be able to make research, right? So moving from not knowing anything about a project or a particular thing to understanding it well enough to explain it to somebody else, right? So you can now focus on that route of like, okay, hey, I want to understand React, for instance. So you could go to GitHub and search for React and see different projects. So once you've found the projects you want to contribute to, the next thing you need to do is identify an issue to solve. So when I was explaining how to find a project, I didn't necessarily restrict it to, okay, how to find projects that already have documentation, because I feel that we could also be pioneers of those documentations. Again, based on the survey, there are tons of open source projects that do not have documentations, right? So when you're trying to identify an issue, chances are if you um, found a project where you already have like an open source documentation, right? All you need to do is go to the repository and then go to the tab of the issues, find an issue you want to work on, um, notify the maintainer about like your interest in that issue and then start working on the issue, right? That's like for a case where you find a document, a project that has a documentation. But what if you, you find or found interest in a project that does not have a documentation, what do you do? you would naturally go through that project. Maybe try to implement the project on your laptop, whatever project it is, right? Try using that project. And then as you're using that project, I'm sure there are so many questions that you'll be asking yourself, but eventually you'd figure it out, right? So when you figure out those things, document down like the entire process, things you wish you could read somewhere, right? Because the chances are when someone else wants to come to use that project, they'll still be asking themselves the same questions, right? So you could be the person who, pioneers documentation in that open source project. So don't restrict yourself to trying to contribute to a project that already has like a structured documentation um, like flow, right? You could start up, start up another one, right? Because I feel like well, once we keep doing this as technical writers, it ensures that more open source projects are documented. So the next survey that GitHub will carry out, 90 people will not complain, sorry, 90% of 5,500 people won't complain about the same issue again. So once you've been able to identify an issue and like start working on the issue, the next thing you need to do is submit a pull request. If you're using GitHub or you're using um, GitLab, it's called a merge request. So another important thing to no take note of here is that most open source organizations have like certain flows in which they want you to submit a pull request. So instead of just like um, sending in your commit and just um, creating a pull request, they want you to follow a certain flow, right? So it could mean um, explaining what you did in that pull, in, in like the pull request, what you did, how it's going to affect the project or how it's going to um, improve the project in any way. So you always try to understand the flow of that open source organization and use that, that flow. If the open source project does not have any form of guide or pull request, you could be that technical writer who decides to do that. Because if an open source project doesn't have that, it means that anybody can can submit a pull request in different ways, which does not bring structure to the organization. So always see from a perspective of, oh, hey, if I find myself in a place where I can contribute to a documentation that already exists, cool. But if it doesn't, can't I be the person who says, oh, I'd love to take this up. And then you bring in more technical writers to contribute to the open source project. So these are some of the best practices you need to understand. You don't necessarily have to follow these best practices, but it's just something that will definitely help you as you're contributing. So the first thing would be to follow a style guide if it exists, because not all open source organizations would have style guides, right? So it's important to try to follow a style guide. So most, most of them would have, so if they do have, follow those ones, 
But if they don't, you could also be the person who says, oh, hey, let me create a style guide for this open source project. Or you could probably use like Google style guide or Microsoft style guides. I know those two style guides are really good for like the developer community and the tech community, but I'm sure there are tons of other um, like good and effective style guides. So try to use any of those ones that work for you. And um, another thing would be to um, ensure that the page title should always reflect the content of your page. So if you're writing something about, um, let's say how to use scroll trigger plug plugin in React, that's like the title. So the content of your page should not be about how to maybe um, react and work with the DOM, right? Because people doesn't know what the reader wanted to see. So whenever you, you write a title, the content of that page should be in line with what the title is. Because if I come to read a certain documentation, a certain article, the reason why I clicked on that particular one is because I found that interesting or I want to solve that certain thing. So ensure that you follow that style guide or rather you, you ensure that I follow your content always or works with the page, so to speak. The next one would be to always define what the page is about in the first paragraph. This is really important because I've seen so many technical articles, so many documentations that don't do this. So most people just go to explaining, maybe explaining a concept immediately without giving the reader an overview of what you want to talk about. So for instance, I come to read an article about getting started with the DOM. I want to understand, hey, why is the DOM important? Why do I need to know those things? What is this article covering in the introduction before I even scroll through the article? So always ensure that at any article you write or any documentation you write for an open source organization, not just an open source organization, like in your work generally, to try to explain or define what the entire page is about in the first paragraph. So once I read the first paragraph, I should already know what this, um, like what this particular document is going to talk about without necessarily scrolling through every single thing. And the next one would be to consider your audience when creating content. So like you already know, we have beginners, we have experts, we have intermediates, people who have never contributed to open source before, people who just, had, who just joined tech like yesterday. So always try to consider those people whenever you're writing documentation, because there's a possibility that someone who just um, decided to give open source contribution to try might come to read their documentation. And if it is not easy enough for them to understand, then the means they would either stop, they would either not contribute to that project and go to another one, or just stop contributing at all. I mean, I've definitely gone through a couple of open source projects and I'm like, okay what am i doing like what do i have to do and it just makes you tired so you just move to the next one right so i hope you can see how technical writers can help make the open source ecosystem better because when anybody comes to an open source project and it sees that the open source project has like effective documentation every single thing is like clearly spelled out and mentioned it helps them understand and know like the right things to do at the right time the right way to contribute the right people to reach out to and it just makes them feel welcome to the open source project or organization generally. And then the final important one is avoid duplicating content. I mean, it's exciting to contribute to an open source project, but always try to ensure that you're not repeating something that's already been documented, which goes further to speak about um, the act of researching as a technical right. Try to research, is this thing not somewhere else? Like, do I just want to document or I want to help to improve that project? So try to, do the necessary research to understand or identify if this content you want to create already exists to avoid duplicating it. Okay, I guess my laptop is hanging for some reason. All right, I don't know why I'm moving, just give me a second. Oh. Sorry, is it moving around there? Because it's probably not moving. No, I'm not seeing it move, Didion. Oh, okay, okay, I think there it's okay now. Okay. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, yeah. So, these are the benefits of contributing to an open source project as a technical writer. Because one of the reasons why people don't contribute is because they're like, oh, hey, it's, it's free. Nobody's paying me to do this. So, why do I have to stress myself to do it, right? So, I'm going to highlight some of these things here. So the first one would be that your technical, writer, your technical writing skill will improve tremendously. I'll, I'll explain why. So when you're writing, it's possible that you have access to someone who helps you review your articles or your documentation before you publish it. But if I'm not mistaken, you probably have like maybe one or two people that help you do that. 
just like a rough, an average technical writer has one or two people who help, like that would help him or her to review her documentation or um, article, right? But in an open source project, you get access to more people, not just people in your location, people who think like you, but like different people across the world. So when there's like someone in, so for instance, I'm in Nigeria, right? And then someone in the US with like a different perception reviews my work and like adds his or her own um, like ideas to what I should do, right? It means that I now understand the audience in the US, right? In, and in turn, it's definitely helping me be a better writer. So I'm not just writing to only Nigerians to understand, but I'm writing to Nigerians and the US as well. So it helps you improve your writing skill in diverse ways, which I've never really covered. But when you keep contributing, you get like a lot of reviews, you get to contribute more to open source, you get to explore more things that you would have not explored if you were writing alone. So that definitely helps to improve your writing skill. And then it also helps to expand your network. When you contribute to open source projects, you meet a lot of people, right? So in my case, work with uh, Videolan, I get to like speak with the president of Videolan, get to speak with like different um, um, developers and designers, right? These are like relationships you're building and these relationships can be really, really important in your career because you really don't know where this person will be there to like maybe give you a recommendation or share an opportunity with you or do something for you to be honest. So it gives you an opportunity to expand your network. And then it also gives you an opportunity to get recommendations and referrals. So um, when I was trying to get the job like some years back, um, you know, when you try to get like your first job, people really want to know, okay, hey, why am I hiring you? You don't have any prior experience. But because I had prior experience with contributing to open source projects as a technical writer, I could say, oh, hey, I contributed to a Media Wiki. I worked on their API documentation. I did this and I did that. And I could see that the person who was interviewing me was really excited and like, oh, like, okay, hey, this girl knows what she's doing. This is me that has never worked in any place, right? So if I didn't contribute to open source, I will probably just be someone who was just writing and didn't have like any experience working with a real life project. So contributing to open source gives you that opportunity to get like recommendations. And if you ever want to apply to something or like to any company, you could easily ask the person who is a maintainer in that open source project to write a referral for you, right? So this is building relationship with people who you would have not most likely not met and then even getting recommendations from those people. Then the sec um, second to the last one is, you could also get accepted into the season of docs program. So the Citizen of Docs program is an initiative by Google to connect technical writers and open source projects together. They also understood this problem of, hey, we have tons of open source projects, but we don't really have like a lot of technical writers who are particip participating in this project, who are contributing to this project, right? So it gives you an opportunity to do that. And one of the benefits of participating in this program is you they also pay you as well so you're not necessarily saying oh we're contributing to open source because it's free you also get paid um ranging from like three thousand dollars to six thousand dollars depending on your on your location and you become an open source contributor to me this is like one of the coolest benefits of contributing to open source as a technical writer because every technical writer contributes to open source helps to debunk the stereotype that only software engineers can contribute to open source so once you keep contributing as a technical writer you are helping more people see that, oh no, I can contribute to, like I don't have to be a software engineer or um, like a core maintainer to contribute. You can also contribute to, technical, to open source projects as a technical writer. Okay, I think there's definitely something wrong with this screen of mine. Okay, the next session would, I would just give a conclusion uh, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know why it's still not working. All right, but in conclusion, um, since my slide is not working, um, the documentation of open source projects is extremely, really important. It's what gives a new user, already existing users, an idea of what the project is, how to get started, what they should build, why they should even be interested in working on that project or contributing to that project or even recommending it to somebody else. So once you contribute to open source as a technical writer, you're not just improving your writing skills or expanding your network, you're basically making open source projects better for people now people in the future making it better for like the open source ecosystem at large because people really need to understand what they want to do for contributors they need to understand how to contribute for users they need to understand how to use for maintainers who just join they need to understand like the flow of the project so that is how critical and important technical writers are 
to open source projects. And I hope that you're able to learn how to contribute to open source projects as a tech co writer. And I encourage you to find an open source project to contribute to. It may not necessarily have the entire documentation figured out. It could be the person who pioneers that. And if you want to take it step by step and join a project that already has it figured out, that's also completely fine as well. Just follow the process of finding a project that works for you, um, identifying an issue, and submitting a pull request after you've worked on the project. Thank you very much. Um, I'll be taking questions now. Adidion, great, great, great job. That's, I think you, you hit the, uh, the, the comment of the day, people can't contribute to what they don't understand. I mean, that's uh, the 90% the, the, uh, stat, I, I believe. I mean, that's uh, really, really a great topic. Um, we had uh, one question coming on the q and I'm not sure if you saw it, um, but this is from, we've got, got a couple coming in. First is from Pamela Thomas. Um, saying that you mentioned there are, there are many style guides to use. What is your yeah. favorite or so your, your favorite... go-to one? To yeah, <laughs> so my go-to is definitely Google Style Guide. Google Style Guide is definitely more like developer-oriented. Like you could definitely see things and understand that if you follow the style guide, it's well, not necessarily developer-oriented, like tech-oriented, to, to be honest, because it's, it's not the... Um, normal style that you see. It's something that works for your target audience. And assuming you're a person in tech, which you are, I would say that is the best style guide to use, like in my opinion. The Microsoft style guide is also really great as well. And I think the Microsoft documentation is one of the best documentations I've seen. Like, I don't know who built it, but they're just like amazing. So, but in the personal experience, I definitely prefer Google style guide, but I would advise you either check Google or Microsoft and pick the one that works for you. Okay, great. Uh, the other question, I'm not sure if you see, uh, Elvin Ridley asked, uh, do you think contributing to the documentation is a way to start in your development journey? So by development journey, are you referring to as a software engineer or a technical writer? I think, yeah, I think that's what, what, you know, like understanding, you know, if you understand the technical pieces and components and you're able to express it to others you know what would that like like let, if, if you wanted to get into say python or, or some language that you're not mm -hmm. familiar with yeah i wonder do you yeah. think it would help you? yeah i totally yeah i agree so the good thing about being a technical writer or documenting is you become a lifelong learner because for you to explain something for somebody to understand you need to understand it very well so when you're writing it gives you an opportunity to learn more. So I think people have a perception that you need to be like super smart to write, but that's absolutely wrong. You could research something you never knew about and now write about it. In that process, you are trying to teach somebody, you're also learning as well. So that would definitely help to improve your development journey. That's a yeah, great, great point. Um, next uh, from Daryl uh, Cooley asking, uh, do you have any good reference guides? for general technical writing and documentation, especially with uh, when the larger uh, target audience is tech users. Any, any reference guides? Okay, yeah, so I have, yeah, so I'll share, I'll just drop that in the chat some, um, let, me, let me just try to Google that. I have like one, I wrote an article where I shared about technical writing and I think the Google's technical writing course is also amazing as well. And there are also a couple of other resources. So let me just drop that in the chat right now. Just give me a second. Okay. Oh, I think I'm sending it. Okay. All right. There we go. Yeah. Great. So Thank you. It. Okay. Send a couple more. I think we have like two or three more links that should be very helpful.
Perfect. Yep. All right, so this tooling should definitely help you get started. Um, Google's technical writing course, and then also in my article. In my article, there are a couple of other resources there as well, which if you read through it, you'll definitely find it. Great, thank you, thank you. Um, let's see, uh, there's another, another question here um, from Lily. Um, how would you go about researching um, or how would you go about searching for an interesting open, open source project on GitHub? Um, or, or do you prefer so, to use, uh, you know, a, like search for a cool technology first and then find the repository associated with that? What's your, what do you do? Yeah, so I, yeah, like I, I mentioned, it's like two different ways, right? So it's, it's, I think it's first trying to understand which, project, which technology you want to contribute to. Is it a, te a, a, te a um, technology that you already have experience with or something you've just always wanted to explore. So if, you've always, if you already know that technology you wanted to explore, you could just go to Google to um, search for it rather, right? Just search for that. So it is React, for instance. Because every um, GitHub project is like tagged with like a certain um, language or whatever that was used for it. So you can easily search for it. So um, there's this good article that has tons of open source projects that you can contribute to a technical writer. So let me just quickly find it and send it to you. Um, but I mean, you could also contribute to VLC as well. So just give me a second, let me try to find that article and send it to you. That's a technical writer. Okay, I've just dropped it in the, oh, I think I'm setting to just very, let me try to find the right one. Okay, so I've just dropped it in the chat. Um, if you click on that list, you see a list of open source, um, different open source projects that you can contribute, um, contribute as, a, as a technical writer. But I think ideally is understanding what you want to do. Do you want to contribute to something you already have experience with? Then you could just go to GitHub and search for it. Do you also want to contribute something you don't have experience with? I'm sure you would know the technology. You just still go there and search for it as well. And always keep in mind that some of these projects may not necessarily have a good documentation, right? Or any kind of flow in terms of contributing in the documentation perspective. So you could be the person who recommends that, right? But if it does have the documentation um, process of, of documenting or contributing, right? You could just pick an issue and work on it as well. <laughs> 